welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name's Heather. I'm a songbird stamper, an independent stampin' up demonstrator. And I'm here today to share with you a brand new suite of products called Elegant We've Said. What I'm actually going to make is a 3D card project today, so I'll show you that in a minute. I just want to run through this gorgeous stamp set that I'm using. It's got some really pretty designs in it and some I love the font. That's possibly why I bought this stamp set, more for the font. But this is one of the images that I'm going to really use today and this pretty, pretty border right here. So that's the Elegantly Said stamp set. It's coming up available for customers to purchase made of four. And in this suite are also these beautiful papers, double sided papers. We've got one side of plain, but they're gorgeous, gorgeous designs. And then on the reverse side, you've got this foiling like a mixed metallic foiling we've got silver copper and gold it's almost paisley design and look how the um, stamp set ties in with the paper there one of the things i love about stamping up products is the coordination perfect for masculine cards this design more feminine cards as well or just regal Love that. Look how look how that's shining. That would be great for kind of it reminds me of church arches. That would be a great card. Could be used with anything, doesn't need to be used with this stamp set. Got all the different metallics on that one. Again, really, really nice for any kind of style card. That with a very vanilla, so no, that's wistful white, I think. Wistful white and gold. And then, last but not least, this is the piece of paper that I'm going to be using today. Isn't that stunning? And just really, really ties in so well with this stamp set here. And then that's the reverse. If you wanted something a little bit plainer, but definitely today, I want this one. So, what are we making? That's what you're here for. We are making these papers away before I get ink all over them. I'm going to show you today how to make this super cute card gift box. So inside we've got a little pocket for three by three thank you cards, a little pocket for gift tags and for your standard sized A6 cards. Thank you and with matching envelopes as well. Always when you make a box size it so that the envelopes fit. That's my biggest tip. I'm like you get kind of get all carried away sizing things for the cards to fit and forget about the envelopes. So I'm going to show you how to make the box and how to make all those three elements inside there today and it just closes up neatly and there's the stamp. So what have we got? We're going to work with a piece of basic black cardstock. You need two sheets of A4 cardstock. This first piece here is going to measure ten and a quarter by six and a half. I've already pre-cut everything, but I'm going to show you how to trim air uh, score it up. And on the long side, so with the arm extended, when I say score on the long side, it's with the long side across the top here. Make sure you've got your trimmer blade tucked neatly out of the way so that you're not going to risk using that one. I'm going to score it on the long side at four and five eighths of an inch. And five and five eighths of an inch and that is as simple as that for the outer edge of your box take your next biggest piece of card which is seven and a half by five and a half all these measurements will be down in the description and also on my blog a link to which will be in the description as well so you can see all the photographs and work through slow time if you want to that's seven and a half by five and a half and screw it on the long side about half an inch and seven inches so the way i do it is i use this side of the trimmer to do half an inch just because i find it much easier and then i turn that round and do the same on the other side which is exactly the same as if i was scoring that at seven inches there just fine when you're scoring such a little amount it's much easier to do it on the right side and that's one of the reasons i love the stamping up trimmer because you get these little notches here, these two, which hold the card in place. Um, and nice big working area on the right, which you don't get on a lot of trimmers. 
And let's grow it on the short side at two and a half and three inches. Two and a half and three. Okay, we'll do all of our scoring first. So take your next piece, which is four and a half by four and a half square. Score it at half an inch and four inches. So again, you can just go half an inch and half an inch. And then score it at two inches and two and a half inches. Last but not least, this little piece here, four and a half inches by three and a quarter inches. Score it on the long side at two inches. And two and a half inches. And screw it on the short side this time at half an inch. And two and three quarters, or again half an inch as in here. That's possibly the most confusing bit because it's slightly different way round to all the other pieces. Alright, so just make sure you watch that and you score it correctly on the long side and the short side there. Put that away for a minute. I fold and burnish all of these score lines. So this one's just simply two score lines folded and burnished, and that's the outer edge of our box there. And then all of these three pieces. I don't know how clearly you can see this on the black card. I'm hoping you can see well enough. So all the instructions will be over on my blog. Okay, so you're left with this here. So we're going to do that on all of our pieces and all of these three will look the same and you carry out the same action on all three as well. So it's nice and simple. Once you get the hang of it with the flying. So what we need to do is grab our snips and we need to notch this middle piece. So cut up the score line and then just notch in and just take away a little bit there. It just means that when you try and stick it all together, you haven't got rucked edges, it should lay nice and flat. And I'm going to again do that on all three pieces, so cut up the score line. Notch it in. Just to create a little tab in there. Final one. So now you can use wet glue, you can use tape, um, whatever your adhesive of choice is. I'm going to be naughty and use some fast fuse just because I've got still got some left and uh, I really like it. So you use your favourite adhesive. But if you don't have anything, seal plus, stamping seal plus would be what I recommend for boxes because it just works better. So what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and stick this flap in between this one and this one. So we want to kind of bring it up and over like that so that the flap is in between the two. I'm hoping you can see that. The reason for that is that we don't just it just keeps it neat. We don't want it to catch on anything. And always when you're making boxes and things, think about where your uh, rough edge is going to be. 
So this one where it's got a nice fold and crease in the card is a nice soft edge. And that one there is a harder edge. So always try and have the two hard edges facing the same way, like that, so that we can then pop that onto our box and then have two nice soft edges. So I'm going to pop a little bit of tape on that one there. on that one there and then what I'm going to do is just try and bring it up and I'm just keeping that bottom edge level don't line up the sides because we've notched them okay but just line up that bottom edge okay and then we're going to pop some glue on that one there and then stick that on the inside and this time we're lining up these top edges Make sure that top edge lines up. And you can just use your burn folder in there and stick that down a little bit. And then again, just thinking about where our back edge is. So the back edge is here. So we want that one there, that one there, and then some tape on this one. It's a bit harder to do when it's all folded up, so I'm just going to come across the width of it. Line the top edge up, line the bottom edge up, and then I've got my little holder. So that's one. Just need to do the same on both of these. Same on both of these, and then we can line that bottom edge up. And then both of these are going to tuck in. Sorry about that, I had uh, battery issues. So, where were we? I've stuck down this little tab on the inside here. So I need to stick this on the inside as well, just making sure those tops are lined up. If you do have any problems getting the tops lined up, you can always just try chopping a little bit off, uh, again, notching a little bit off the end here and see if that works. So I'm going to lay that flat. Pop some tape down this section and this section, and then I can put those on the inside, line it up, and then squeeze it down. Again, just use your bone folder if you need to. And there's our second little pocket. Same with this one. Put the tape on the tabs. I told you you'd have this down by the time you've uh, done three of them. Line up that bottom edge, just make sure that's flat. And then these two again are going to go on the inside. So I'm going to run some tape down. And we are good to go. So that's the bones of our box made. Take your outer section, hold the flap up so you've just got this base section to work with. And what we're going to do is take our longest piece, make sure it's all kind of well stuck down. Figure out which is the back, and I want the back to be the section here where I've got my hard edges. I'm not going to use liquid glue this time because you get a bit of wiggle room. So I'm just going to put some liquid glue all around the outside. You don't need much of this. Keep the nozzle in contact. I probably will that. I'll move my jumper now. Keep the nozzle in contact with the card and that helps you to get a nice a fine line out. Then line up this bottom edge and on the edge there stick that down. Liquid glue always just takes a second to dry. All I'm doing there is making sure that it's pushed down to the bottom edge. 
one. You can use your tape runner. Are you a phone holder there? Just to help yourself to squidge that down a little bit. And then these two are going to fit whichever side you want your 3x3 three three cards and your tags. They're just going to fit on like that. Again, a little bit of liquid glue. Not right up to the edge. Can you see I've left a little bit of a gap there? And that will give me a chance to have a little bit of a gap in the middle and a little bit of a gap on the right there as well. One of my biggest tips for wet glue is once you've made contact and you're sure everything's made contact, just leave it. If you fiddle too much with it, like I have a real tendency to do, um, you can lose the bond. You're actually better off just leaving it, leaving it be. Put that to one side then while we work on our decoration. So I've got some pre-cut silver foil and some of this designer series paper. This one here is four and three eighths by six and a quarter. And this is four and one eighths by six. Because we're working with like a foiled paper, I wouldn't normally recommend using liquid glue because where the liquid glue sits on the back of this foiled area, it can cause it to raise. So I tend to use a stamp and seal. You can gut this if you want to. So let me show you how to gut this out. Because silver foil is quite expensive um, and you don't necessarily want to waste a lot of it. So all I do is I line it up at about this mark here, there's nothing too precise to be honest. Leave enough of a border though, and then bring your trimmer blade, start it in. You want to aim for about that point there, if you can see where I've made a little bit of a mark. And then bring it down again so that you're not cutting all the way to the ends. And then line that up where you think the end of your cut line is. And like you can see, there's nothing too accurate about this. We're just cutting a section out of the middle so that we can go on to use this for something else. And we're left with this outer edge here. So I'm going to use some stamp and seal. Trim that all the way around the edge. Come to the end. Oop, we just need a little bit of fast space then. And right, make sure I get right into the corners. And then line that up. Always try and kind of play around with it, hovering it off the page. Because once you've stuck it down, it can be quite difficult then to lift it up. And that's like that. And then you can go ahead and use liquid glue on the rest. Oh actually no we can't because we've got now we've got no backing now on this. So again we'll just use some um fast fuse. I have got plenty of this so I won't change my stamping seal refill just yet. I'll wait until after I finish this video. And that's gonna go on the outside. So if you don't if you want to just lay that down like that. Again, just kind of lining up. I try and line up that corner and that corner, make sure I've got equal distances going all the way around. And that should mean it's as straight as possible. How pretty is that? It's absolutely stunning, isn't it? It really works with the black and the, the silver. And then the same on these two little pieces. I'm not going to bother gutting these though because they're quite small as they are. But again, I'm just trying to line up. It's quite a big border. This should be an eighth of an inch on either side. If you wanted a little border, you can change your measurements, no problem at all. I 
and because I'm not going straight onto the back of the designer series paper there, I can use liquid glue and that just gives us a little bit of wiggle room, especially when we're working onto something that's not quite as solid underneath. Right, so that's our box. All decorated. Beautiful, isn't it? So pretty. And then we'll move on to making our cards and our tags. So we'll start off with our little card, I think. I've got a three by three inch card. I've got a piece of design series paper measuring two centimetres by three inches. I mix my measurements. I apologise, but don't apologise. Um, and I've got some memento. Black ink, let me pop the lid on for now, and this gorgeous, gorgeous stamp. So I'll ink that up. I'm just going to look to see where do, where do I think the top of the, the paper kind of comes to, and you can mark that with a pencil if you wanted to. I just want the stem to go behind the paper, but the flowers to be above. So I'm going for that, and then when we stick that on, it kind of looks like the flower is coming up from underneath there. Before I stick that down though, I've got the word thank you. Beautiful font and that's just going to sit up the top right. So because I've already stamped onto it, I am just going to use my embossing buddy. And reverse the marking. Okay, some rhymes come from there to make sure it's of straight. So I've recently upgraded my embossing powders to sit in these kind of takeaway tubs which we already had loads of. I just didn't think to use them. It makes it so much easier. And then apologies for the noise. it's just like magic isn't it and that's it it really is as simple as that a little bit of tape on the back of this one probably could refill my snail and show you how to do that at the same time that's going to then line up against the bottom edge if it hangs over ever so slightly just grab a pair of scissors use the back card as a guide and just trim a little bit off so here's my stamp and seal refill. So you get the stamp and seal. The outer cases for the seal and the C plus are actually the same. And then it's just the refills that you get a difference. So that comes out. That one then is, you can see because I've got to the end where the red is, sadly expired. And then you're looking for a hole here and a big hole here and a prong and a big prong. I'm just going to line those up, pop that down, click the case back on, and you should be good to go. There we go. But that is our 3x3 card. How easy is that? We've got some of the basic rhinestone gems. So I'm just going to take three of those. Sometimes with a thank you card, I find it, it, a little a little thank you card is fine. I wouldn't normally make these three by three for birthday cards because they seem a little bit impersonal. But just as a nice thank you card, just to slip with something, with a gift or whatever, they're really pretty and so, so quick to make, aren't they? If you want to, you can also decorate the envelope. So I've got a three by three envelope and I'm just going to stamp the flower. Making handmade things means that you can make everything coordinate. Stamp the flower down the bottom right hand side. 
sometimes we're scared of using black ink I think it, you kind of think oh, I've got to have all these colours and sometimes it's nice to have colours but with a, certainly with a sweet like this you could get away with just having the black ink totally and if you didn't have heat embossing you could do this in black ink as well so there's our first mini project second one we're going to make is a tag it's very very similar all I've got is a piece of card two inches by about ten centimeters and this delightfully detailed tag punch pop that card in all the way so you can see it could be varying sizes of card here two inches is the widest and it creates this absolutely gorgeous top to your tag there I think stamp this let me grab one that I've already done so that you can see them all the same and the first thing to do is to make sure that they're all the same length so it is a little bit um, longer so I'm just going to trim a little bit at the bottom here just so that they all match so I'm going to do it by eye but all you need to do is when you make your tags cut them all the same length however many you want to make it's only because I've done it in two batches and didn't actually write the measurements down and now I know that they're the same size okay so we're going to take our stamp again into our memento Stamp that on so that it fits on the page. I've just re inked it, so I'm just going to leave that to dry for a quick second. Uh, use my embossing bunny just on the edge there. And this time I've got the tiny little thank you uh, for you because I thought this could go with a gift. Not necessarily a thank you gift, but any kind of gift. Or could be turned into a little mini bookmark as well. So I've just got the word for you. Have a think, just make sure where you stick your paper. We are going to stamp over the black here. Okay. The reason I'm not sticking the paper down first is sometimes with... Um, foiled papers the, the heat isn't great for them so just take away any excess and then heat emboss that Because you've heat embossed over the black, you'll still see it. Can you, if it catches the light, can you see? You can still see the silver heat embossing over the black. It becomes opaque, which is perfect for what we want. So a little bit of tape on the back of this design series page. Now with this seal plus, if it doesn't go to begin with, it just you just use your finger and run it on until you get some adhesive. You might need to do that a couple of times throughout your um, working with it as well if it slips back. Stick that one on there. And then this is the black organdy ribbon with silver flecks. Stunning, absolutely stunning ribbon. Perfect for this suite. Fold it in half, poke it through. This is a little bit challenging, this, because it's quite a grippy ribbon. So you're going to have to work fairly hard and be gentle so that you don't rip the top of your tag, bookmark, whatever you want to call it. And then you're just trying to manipulate it to go through the hole. But I did find this ribbon quite a challenge to get through. But it looks so stunning, it's worth, the, worth persevering. Trim those edges off. And then you've got your tag. Final one, onto our card. So I've got a basic white thick, 14 and a half by 21, scored in half. Then I've got a matte 
14 by 10 in silver, Whisper White 13 and a half by 9 and a half. A little piece of cardstock here um, that is actually 9.5 by 3.3. The DSP is 9.5 by 2.9 and a scrap. Okay, so you can gut this one here if you want to. Just like we did before, then that can go over one side. Just gives you so much more life to your. You could do it with design series paper as well if you use paper as a mat. If you want to be very frugal, and then we won't do that yet. Let me think, Heather. So we need to decorate this one first. We're going to heat emboss. So just use the buddy there. And we want to use this decoration. This is the card that we're going to be making. It's not a great one to use because I used Winkle Stella on that one, flicked it on, but I wasn't sure. We're going to use this long stamp and we're going to try and heat emboss in a straight line, fairly standard distance away. So I'm lining this up with the grid paper. That's the first thing I'm going to do. Okay, so I've lined it up along the bottom here. I'm hoping you can see. And then I know I'm going to use grab a pen, it's one of my favourite pens. Um, I'm going to use this line and this line. Okay, and I, I'm just marking it up. So it's one, two, three, four, five squares on the grid paper. I'm going to need to stand up to do this, but I think, hopefully I can see. Just got a little bit of light coming in here. Hoping that's not gone too dark now for you. It is a little bit dark, but it's okay. Let's go with it. So that's on the Versa mark again, and I know I'm using this line. And turn it around. So I had facing down, and now I've got facing up. So I'm just using that grid paper to help me line my stamp up. Lines completely, just bear with me. Good, no. So, straight into the embossing powder. That's all the excess. So I've heat embossed the top and the bottom line just here and I've grabbed my piece of 
designer series paper. Got some stamp and seal on the back of that one. Layer that onto my black card. Gives a nice little border, top and bottom. And the same then with that one. And this should, if I've measured everything correctly, go just in between the two pieces there. And if you stump it straight as well. So I've got this greeting which is just says, wishing you a wonderful birthday. Um, the only thing I found with this stamp is it doesn't particularly stamp straight. I think the, the maybe I've not put the sticker on correctly. So I know by stamping on the grid paper that I just need to angle that text down ever so slightly and that will then give me a nice stamp there. Leave the lid off that one just because I want to stamp the flower in memento onto my scrap bit of paper. Quickly fussy cut that one out. This is a really really nice set to work with especially because like I say you don't need an awful lot of colours you've just got the memento, a little bit of heat embossing which is um, honestly I love heat embossing it's like magic every time I watch it. Um, so if you've never tried it give it a go, I would highly recommend it. It just adds a real touch of class, I think, to the project. And you can get the Stampin' Emboss Powder in six different colours, um, three each in a set. You've got your metallics, and then you've got your, your more plain more colours, black, white, and clear. And then you just need some Versamark and a heat gun as well. And you are good to go. I can't wait to give this set to somebody. I think that's what I'll do with it. I think I'm going to gift my box of cards away. It's a nice little gift for somebody to have. And then they've got thank you cards and birthday cards that they can give out. And you can always put hand, hand stamped by Heather on the back of it. So that they would know, the recipient would know that their friend has given them a handmade card, even if they didn't make it. It's nice, isn't it? So a few dimensionals on the back of that one. Only at the top though, what I'm going to kind of do, because um, it's got a double dimension here with the card, uh, I don't really want to lay it flat because it just looks a little bit funny. So I thought, well, let's go with it. Let's pop some dimension on the back. And then go with some liquid glue just down the bottom here. And it just stands proud a little bit then. Now we can go straight in with the stamping seal. You could use wet, uh, wet glue for this as well if you wanted to. Onto our pre-cut mat here. birthday cards you want something a little bit more special don't you so I try and make them with those layers and yeah a little bit more interesting than the, the thank you card we did earlier so we've got some heat embossing we've got some stamping a bit of um, design series paper and some mats and layers as well because they always make it look a little bit more classy and obviously a little bit of bling as well Final thing to do, you could stamp on the inside if you wanted to, you could do a little motif down the bottom there. I am just going to stamp the envelope, so I've got my plain basic white envelope, my flower stamp and some memento in. One down there. You could leave it as that if you wanted to. When I stamped some of my envelopes earlier, I actually, actually stamped them upside down. So I then had to do a bit of a quick fix and so I've just done one top, one bottom. The dress goes in the middle and you've got a gorgeous, sophisticated card.
card set. So the small thank you card, an envelope, lovely birthday card and envelope and a gift tag there as well for you. So I hope you could see that okay, I hope it wasn't too dark for you in the end. Hope you enjoyed the little project. They're all going to go nicely into my little card box here. So you've got room for your envelopes at the back. And your card's going to go in that way. Three by three cards and envelopes in that pocket there. And a little tag for you. That's all my lovelies. Thanks very much indeed. You take care. Have a great day. And I'll see you back here very, very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.